couple of things that I had uh, one thing I didn't mention earlier is a reminder of the wedding this Saturday Colton and Devin 6 o'clock uh, right here um, I realize we have a mess but for the most part oh, well, by the way we'll clean up those chairs that are upside down by Saturday I'm sure <laughs> but anyhow even more important than that, if you have not already, start praying for them. God be in the center of it. Amen? Yeah. Now, yeah, marriage is an exciting time. It's a great time. And uh, we need to be in prayer uh, for all of our uh, marriages and families. And speaking of that, I don't want you to sing or anything, but my beautiful bride's birthday is today. I just want you to know that. And heavy on the beautiful, I just want you to know that. <laughs> Something about living with me 24 years, she just glows more and more every year. <laughs> Amen. I'm not near as much trouble as Danny is, I can tell you that. He said he wasn't listening. I got news for you. Faye ain't talking either from now on. You don't have to worry about listening. Anyway, I want to invite you to turn to... Luke chapter 15 this morning. Luke chapter 15. We're not going to look at the prodigal son today, but we are going to look at the first 10 verses, which will lead up to it. Luke 15. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. Both the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity and this, the blessing we have to come into this place. To not only lift up our voices to you in song, or to give back to you with our tithes and offering. But Father, to be here. Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to teach us your word, your truth. Father, through the reading and teaching and preaching of your word. Father, may your Holy Spirit guide each and every word. May you pierce our hearts with your truth. And Father, cause it to grow. We may be drawn to you. Father, give us understanding and clarity. Father, convict us where we need convicting. Encourage us, Lord, where we're weak. Strengthen us, Lord. And Father, I pray that your will will be accomplished in the hearts of everyone who is here today. Father, I have your way. And Lord, I pray as always the words of my mouth and meditation in my heart may be pleasing in your sight. Father, for you are my rock and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And amen. amen. In Luke chapter 19, 
I know we read 15, but Luke chapter 19, I want to read a verse for you. You don't have to turn there. Luke 19, verses 9 and 10. The story of Zacchaeus. And after Zacchaeus, in verse 8, said, stopped and said, Lord, behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he, too, is the son of Abraham. In verse 10 is what I want to focus on today. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. If we're going to be the church that God has called us to be, the example that Jesus was, is, we need to be a people to seek out the lost. Here's some tough questions for the church today. What's God more concerned about? Attendance or salvation? What's he more concerned about? Scripture memorization or salvation? Is he more concerned about the budget, whether or not we meet it, whether we don't? Or is he more concerned about the salvation of people around us? And he's even more concerned about salvation than he is serving. He's more concerned about the salvation of a lost world than the serving of his children. Now, some may disagree with that, but I'm telling you right now, Jesus gave one example. He said, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. Folks, there's a crisis in the church today. Our focus has moved from looking outward to looking inward. Every remedy, every solution I think I have always points and focuses towards me. That's what I want. I want it to serve me. I want the church to serve me. I want all of it to be about me. When Jesus said it should all be about those who need Him. We missed it. And we're still missing it. You know how I know? Because I guarantee you, the 90 churches across America today, if you ask them, how can we fix a problem in the church? Not one of them would mention, let's go out and share Jesus with somebody else. We get all kinds of answers. But how many times?